obviously our focus with swarm so far and swarm research the the, <clears throat> the most um, innovative part was exactly what i talked about the incentive system uh, this this has been our focus because the actual technology for data distribution and retrieval as i said have been available and research has been very uh, you know quite progressive in the, in that field in the in the past decades but what remained unsolved so far was was in incentivizing a set of nodes or the, the network of, of nodes to uh, to provide reliable service um, there's two uh, major components in, 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 in reliability which ha we have to take care of one is the one is concerns the, the healthy operation of the network meaning to, to serve uh, content in a low latency fashion. This, uh, this, this, this is necessary for to provide the, the, the web experience that users are used to, basically real-time interactive web applications. Um, um, BitTorrent is not um, uh, capable of doing that, so we, that, was, that was a very important goal for us. So this concerns uh, basically compensating uh, nodes for their bandwidth contribution. Now, bandwidth contribution is relatively easy to solve because once you get some data and you, di you can directly pay for it, it's, uh, it's, it's like you know, when, you, when you buy a glass of lemonade and you pay for it, it's, it's relatively easy exchange of goods. However, in the, the other pillar of, this, um, of the incentivization, which is what you do with um, content storage long term, uh, so basically the reliability that if, I, if you want to say, use the cloud, like we're talking about the cloud, like the decentralized storage network, for long-term storage, say, of, um, like say, you want to upload your birth certificate or your family photo album, you really want to make sure that uh, content is there even after years of uh, not using them or not retrieving. And bandwidth incentivization can, can incentivize popular content to be replicated and therefore uh, securely stored because nodes will be motivated to keep them because they can earn money by uh, serving them to, to nodes that are interested. However, for unpopular content, uh, the story is much more much more uh, complex. First of all, you have to have uh, this this other type of incentive, which uh, basically compensates nodes for the for the opportunities for gun to not store more popular content. So in, when 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 the decision comes for a node to uh, to, get, to either delete your family album or, and, or, or, or serve something that's potentially more popular, then if, if, you, if you don't take care that they, they're motivated enough to keep your content, your content will be, say, garbage collected or deleted in the end. And that sort of uh, incentive system is a little bit more complex than the bandwidth incentive. Why is that? It's because uh, you're basically dealing with a promise. At the point of uh, you, know, you uploading a family album, and you wanting to make sure that that family album is preserved in the network for a longer period of time, uh, you're basically buying a promise. And the promises are a bit difficult because um, there's, there's immediately a conflict when, when you settle the payment. If you, if you settle the payment in advance, then your, your store or node that promised it might just disappear, and then you can just you know, shout in the ether and, you know, where is my data? And if they disappear, and what, what can you do? Or if you defer payment until the, the promise is fulfilled, then of course the other party is, is, is taking the risk and someone stores your data, but in the end they say, okay, I stored your data after a year and now you can pay. But nah, you said, it's not so important. I have a replica anyway, it's just delete it. And that's it. So they miss the payment. So um, there's this obvious uh, problem, you know, occurs with, you know, of course, with, with a lot of other areas as well. Uh, has, uh, is, has, has very interesting solutions offered by, by the blockchain and smart contracts. Uh, the way it's working in, in Swarm is, uh, is that you, um, you, when you, when you, when you pay for, for the long-term storage, uh, you basically um, lock up a, s a particular amount of money in a smart contract. Um, I, I, I try to simplify the, the, the story a little bit, and that that particular money is released in installments at particular times when you when your counterparty is providing a proof that they still have the data. 
Now, how do they prove that they, that they still have the data? We don't have to go into technical details, but obviously there's much better ways to prove it than you downloading the, the whole stuff. This, is, this, this construct is called proof of custody, or proof of storage. It's a cryptographic construct which allow you to have a compact proof uh, proving to, uh, to any third party that you store a, a blob of data without transferring the whole data and without revealing the actual contents. And um, we worked quite a lot on, on, on such a scheme and how to, how to optimize such a scheme. And that was, that was quite a challenge. And we actually wrote uh, two uh, research papers on, on, the, on the solution. One is about this generic pattern of how, how we do the incentivization. And the second one is a little bit more formal about the actual proof of custody construct. Uh, the interesting properties of it is how, how you can efficiently uh, you know, prove that you store the data in even large collections. So basically, you have the, the use case is that you have to prove that the cloud, not necessarily one, one node, one, one store or node, but in the cloud altogether, has, um, say, the entire Wikipedia uh, completely flawlessly, like with, with its full integrity stored without you, you know, having to, having to store or like have a lot of data traffic. And uh, we came up with a scheme which does exactly that. It's just passing like really little bits of data among a few nodes and can prove beyond arbitrary level of certainty that you want that, uh, that the entire Wikipedia is, is there and where, where your family album is, 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 is there and, and preserved without you having to retrieve the whole stuff. Have you ever encountered a situation when, when uh, your favorite service of yours uh, was, uh, was down? Now, in, 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 a, in a proper decentralized network, when content is stored redundantly across many nodes, uh, this is almost impossible. Because there's a very l l little chance that uh, all, all, the, all the nodes that redundantly store uh, your data are uh, down or compromised at the same time. So decentralized solutions were proposed already in like a few decades ago and it, they, they, they proved extremely robust against um, you know, you know, various attack vectors, so to say. One attack vector is like you know, uh, censorship, obviously. So um, in general, decentralized storage solutions offer uh, kind of zero downtime uh, a completely fault tolerant operation and at the same time uh, promise you know censorship resistance and uh, therefore they uh, they can um, you know compete with, with really high technology solutions of uh, of, of, of cloud um, service providers and finally they, they do it at the fraction of the cost that that um, you know data uh, cloud providers uh, offer and not less important is the aspect of privacy. Because uh, often the compromise that you have to take uh, for relatively uh, cheap or free uh, cloud service provision is that your data goes through, uh, goes through entities which uh, you know, turn that into profit. So uh, old adage that you know, if the product is free then you are the product. <laughs> and this is exactly what happens at the, in, in the broken internet at the moment. That um, the, the way to solve scalability and all these kind of fortress properties uh, in, in Web2 data providers offer you the you know, free scalable services with their huge data centers. But at the same time they can, they can do this by you know, making you your product. They do user profiling, they have the say, like who accesses your content and what's accessed. Uh, so there's, there's relatively strong censorship, so to say. And uh, this might not be relevant to, to a lot of us in, in countries like with, with progressive uh, you know, governments, but it's a huge problem, for example, in China, <laughs> where the Great Firewall like, really makes people's life uh, very difficult and, and um, sh shields a lot of uh, you know, content and information from them. And um, you know, decentralized solutions are you know, extremely powerful uh, 
countermeasures to, to these, these restrictions that people suffer. A lot of today's businesses uh, are intermediaries. They, uh, they make money from market making. However, oftentimes their actual contribution is hardly more than what can be automated. Uh, Ethereum is based on the idea that uh, service providers and customers can be directly linked and they can have a, 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 a direct transaction. And so therefore uh, it, it, it allows for automation of, of, of all these intermediates, intermediaries and services and or, or at least makes it uh, necessary that if you want uh, to operate an intermediary service like a middleman, then you, uh, you ultimately have to prove that you add value to the, to, the, to the transaction, to the economy. So what am I talking about, like what's the examples? You can have uh, taxi services without a taxi company, so Uber without the Uber company, you can have Airbnb without Airbnb, you can have takeaway services without the actual takeaway service aggregator company, because all the direct interactions become possible and the automated, uh, you know, market making is possible on the blockchain. And uh, most and most importantly, value transfer you know, becomes possible without intermediary banks. So, actually, the, you know, the first really successful application of blockchain was actually decentralized money currency. So, Bitcoin was successful based on exactly this premise that you can get around the the, the need for <coughs> for a centralized uh, trusted third party and you can still do a, a very secure a direct value transfer trustlessly. Exactly because, uh, because it's based on the idea of decentralized consensus, it uh, does away with the, with the need for, for, for huge central powerful organizations that they often uh, corruptible entities because uh, by their very nature since they concentrate power by virtue of the fact that being being the oracles or being the the, the, the ultimate keepers of the truth they uh, they accrue power beyond you know what their what their what their remit would be and theref therefore they are they are usually you know very easily corruptible they they so to say single points of failure in the system and uh, the the reason why decentralized consensus is so exactly so powerful is that it it can do away with the with the, with the centuries of practice that simple simply because of of the logistics so historically uh, a lot of uh, coordination problems or a lot of um, you know consensus problems uh, had to be solved by having having you know centralized oracles and 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 third parties because simply logistically it was not possible to disseminate information, to collect information. And that's why a lot of these uh, entities uh, accrued incredible power and, and concentrated power in the, in the hands of individuals or, or, or certain organizations. And that led to a, to a lot of uh, abuse of power. Now, the, the potential that the decentralized consensus does away with, this, with the need for this is extremely powerful. I truly believe that this is a this is a very significant civilizational accomplishment that this innovation makes it possible to decentralize you know, oracles. You can have, say, land registries without having a land registry institution, which was always, like throughout history, you know, very court, very close to the uh, royal, royal courts, <laughs> exactly because uh, because of the power that uh, that uh, um, you know the holders of truth can have.